I got you now. It's only one round. Anything else? Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to ask the questions or just yeah. answer them? <clears throat> you guys are all the same. I could write this. <laughs> yeah. But with all right. the proper spelling and yeah, I don't have that part, that. no. Computer so. so Do you guys have editors too? <clears throat> nah. All right, we're here with Joel really? Damon. Yes. Three under 67. Joel, can you talk us through your round a little bit today? Uh, I made a great uh, bogey on the first. Um, or on my 10th hole, that's a par five, so it was fine. Uh, and then I made a good putt on the par three and it was kind of settled me down and I hit a bunch of fairways and greens after that and just kind of kept the ball in front of me, kept it in play and took advantage of some of the easier holes. Yeah, three birdies in your last five holes. What'd you find towards the end of the round? Well, the easier holes on the golf course. <laughs> uh, I found a drivable par four that I knocked it on the fringe. Uh, the shot I hit into six was a great golf shot that worked out even better. And then uh, eights, I mean, long players would be hitting short irons in there today downwind. So found some of these just easier holes on the back or I guess on the front. What was your mindset going into today? And how does that change now that you're tied for the U.S. Open lead? <laughs> uh, I knew I could compete here because the, it's not overly long. Uh, I hit a bunch of fairways. I typically hit a lot of greens. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, I don't, I don't have to, I try to keep expectations low, as you guys probably know a little bit, but um, yeah, it, it just shows that this is a good golf course for me, and um, if I can keep it in the ball this way, I can probably hang around for a long time. Go ahead, Dan. Have you always been that way? Like, when you were a junior, were you like, ah, oh, I'm not very good, or was it, is this like a pro thing? I don't thing? know, like, it's self-deprecating a little bit but like I mean my dad taught me to be very humble I guess like it was I remember some vivid car rides coming home after a junior win or whatever and it was like well you don't you don't talk about yourself you don't it's like you let people ask you questions type thing so it's not necessarily a humble thing anymore it's just like um I don't know staying neutral you can't get too high too low I mean do I believe myself yeah like if you look at my game and what I am like for me to make it on tour for six years and play this well like that's probably overachieving some would say I mean, I wasn't all American. I wasn't the best, so um, I think it's just kind of understanding who I am and where I'm at. And I don't know. Rocco Media took Tiger to 91 holes. I think I could do okay. What is it about this golf course? You, you kind of mentioned it. Is it a, a not gentler, but a different test than U.S. Open to the past couple of years? Yeah, like the wing foot was just kind of stood out to me. Like I didn't have a fighting chance there. Like I had to hit it so perfect all the time. Where this one. Even if you're in the rough, it's graduated a little bit. I can get it around the greens. Or uh, I'm not hitting four iron hybrid into every hole. There's wedges out there. Um, you know, you can get to the par five today, number eight. Um, that stuff, like, you still have to hit it great, and you still have to be in the right spots. But this is, like, everyone can play this golf court, from Brian Stewart to myself to the long players. Um, and you have to hit, like, even myself, I hit multiple three woods off the tee, hit a hybrid on nine. It's not just a hit it as far as you can type, type contest. Yeah, Brandon. How would you describe your competitiveness, like as an athlete? You know, uh, pretty high. I'm super competitive. Uh, I love competing. I don't. I mean, I I I am the greatest backyard game player in the world. Max Homa will tell you differently, but darts, cornhole, like I would put myself against anyone, especially on the PJ Tour. Uh, but I just I love being competitive. I love playing for whatever it is, cards. Um, I've always been that way always been super competitive so i guess with that said like when part of the personality is that self-deprecating thing and you you like to say you know oh, i'm not going to do this i can't do that is it is there then something actually in the back of your mind where you're like now i'm going to prove everything it's also that kind I just of fun i mean when you're with these other guys like they have it a little bit but it's also like getting between the ropes like i'm very competitive and i believe in myself and i hate losing but it's also like for me it's the most fun to play with it when you're playing with those best players got to play with Spieth in the final round close to the lead twice this year and I'm like like I like in that moment like I am I, I love that stuff like I love being in that in that situation I love being nervous I love my hand shaking and that's why we play the game um but and I've I've done pretty well under pressure like the closer I get to it like I don't tend to just completely collapse I mean obviously everyone has at times but I do better when I'm in the moment than I'm screwing around in 40th trying to just make a paycheck type thing a little more focused on every little thing, for sure. Yeah, go ahead, Luke. Uh, I know it wasn't an issue today, but when things do start going tough for you, do you start believing the self-deprecating stuff and start having to do the opposite and talking yourself up a bit? You have to do a little bit of both, and Gina, my caddy, has probably been on me at times for that. It's like, you know, you have to 
there is times where it's easy to kind of just, oh, it's fine to cruise down the hill and just this slippery slope and you just find myself at the bottom and pick yourself back up again. But, you know, when you get in these moments, in these bigger events, like that's what I love. And, um, yeah, I, which, what, you know, when, when I'm playing well and I'm in these moments, like I, I get more fired up for it. I'm ready to go more. I have a harder time to tee it up on a Saturday or Sunday when I'm in 40th. Like that just doesn't get my blood going. Yeah, Dan? Are we sort of getting ahead of ourselves with the talk after one round? Like, is it? Is there... Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, you, it's pretty easy to go shoot 76 or 77 out there, and all of a sudden you're in 40s again. But also, like, I don't know, you, how often do you get to be tied for lead at U.S. Open? Like, this is just, this is incredible, right? I had two putts from 30 feet, and I'm like, I don't think anyone in the afternoon is probably going to shoot three. Like, that'd be a hell of a score, but it'd be a really cool footnote and whatever it is. And if I ended up 40th, who cares? But... This will be so. Actually, like finishing in the lead is something that would be like actively cool. Absolutely, why not? Like, is it way cooler to finish in the lead on Sunday? Yeah, yeah but is it still cool as like a kid who grew up in Clarkson, Washington, to be like, man, he's leading the U.S. Open? Like, that's kind of a cool deal, for sure. Yeah, last one, Dylan. What does the rest of your day look like? You know, you got a tomorrow afternoon is your next yeah. tee time. What do you do between now and then? Uh, fortunate, a I'm going to call him a newly best friend, Ben Rector. He's a musician. Uh, I got to meet him at Pebble this year, and he's in town tonight. So we're going to go to his concert. It will be difficult to go to that one and not have 100 beers like we typically do <laughs> at the concerts. But, uh, yeah, so I have uh, my wife's siblings. I guess they're my brother and sister-in-law since we're married. But they just graduated high school, so they're in town. Uh, we'll go to dinner and go watch Ben tonight and have an easy night. But with it being 2 o'clock tomorrow, we'd, I try to stay up later so I can sleep in longer because the long mornings kind of, there's nothing to do. So, yeah. Thanks, Joel. Yeah. Thank you, guys.